Dr. Debelina? Yes. Association of vitamin D devil levels on preterm babies developing ROP. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. So today my topic is on association of vitamin D levels in preterm babies developing ROP. Come to the introduction, as we all know, ROP is a vascular proliferative retinal disorder specifically seen in preterm babies. It approximately affects uh, 32,000 children uh, worldwide causing childhood blindness because of ROP. The most common risk factor that we are aware of is low gestational age, low birth weight and increased oxygen supplementation. Now coming to vitamin D, it is a known fat soluble vitamin and the functions are it regulates gene expression, inflammation and angiogenesis. The fetus generally gets the supply of vitamin D through the placental transfer in the last trimester. Thus preterm babies are deprived of this only source of vitamin D and are inherently de uh, deficient in vitamin D. The aim of my study was to compare the serum vitamin D levels in preterm babies developing ROP and those not developing ROP. It was a case control descriptive study done in a tertiary care centre in South India over one year. Sample size were 54 preterm babies equally distributed into two groups. Babies with ROP were tw uh, 27 and without ROP were 27. We included babies with gestational age less than 34 weeks and uh, birth weight less than 2000 grams according to the RSBK inclusion criteria. And we excluded babies that were lost to follow up and babies with no metabolic disorders like diabetes. Uh, methodology again, uh, we noted the gender, gestational age and birth weight for each baby. The serum samples were collected from each baby in the fourth week of their life and stored in the deep freezer. And once all the samples were collected, we ran the uh, ELISA kits for uh, measuring the serum vitamin D levels. The ROP screening was started from day 21 of life or post-conception age 31 weeks by senior ophthalmologists and they were followed up routinely depending on the vascularity status of the retina. So babies were screened according to the ICROP guidelines and treated according to the ETROP guidelines. And the other risk factors we noted along with these babies were the APCA scores, RDS, presence of apnea, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, PDA, intraventricular hemorrhage, sepsis, anemia, thrombocytopenia and any history of blood transfusion. The reference values for the serum vitamin D levels in these babies were noted as deficient if it was less than 20 nanogram, insufficient if it was between 20 to 30 and normal if it's more than 30 nanogram per ml. Statistical analysis was done using the SPSS uh, version 23. The normality of the data was tested using the shapiro wilk test. Categorical data was calculated using percentage and frequency, continuous variable with mean and standard deviation. Bivariate uh, test was used using the man with mu test and categorical data was done using the G-square test and Fisher exact test and significance was set at a p-value of 0 0.05. Coming to the results, out of the 27 babies developing ROP, 55.6% had uh, type 1 ROP, out of which two babies developed aggressive ROP, and 44.4% babies had type 2 ROP, not requiring any treatment. All the 15 babies with type 1 ROP, they were treated with uh, peripheral laser ablation, and the two babies, uh, the one specifically who had the aggressive ROP, were treated with intravitreal bevacizumab injection. Coming to the data, we saw more number of babies with ROP, they were male patients, but it was not significant. Gestational age and birth weight, however, were lesser in babies developing ROP than the babies not developing. We also noted that more number of babies with ROP had a small for gestational age. Uh, more number of babies in our study, they were delivered via cesarean section in the group with ROP. Uh, comparing the other variable factors, we noted only anemia to be significantly associated with the babies developing ROP. Coming to the vitamin D levels, we saw that the babies uh, developing ROP had uh, uh, deficiency around 14.8% and insufficiency, uh, insufficiency in 40.7%. Comparing this uh, uh, data between the ROP and no ROP group, we can see the first one both the mean and the quartile ranges are uh, way less in the babies developing ROP. And when we compared uh, based on the gestational age and the vitamin D levels, we saw gradually the vitamin D levels are increasing. However, the group with ROP had definitely lesser uh, amounts of uh, vitamin D. 
Uh, now comparing the serum uh, vitamin D level between the subgroups that is type 1 and type 2, we definitely saw a lesser um, amount of vitamin D, the mean level of vitamin D levels in babies requiring treatment that is type 1 ROP and that was significantly, uh, statistically significant. Whereas on multivariate analysis, anemia and history of blood transfusion was also significantly greater in babies developing type 1 ROP. Coming to discussion. ROP, as we know, it occurs in two phases. That is the phase of vasculogenesis and angiogenesis when there is neovascularization. Vitamin D receptors, we've seen that it's there in the endothelial cells of the retinal vessels. Now these preterm babies, as we know, they are devoid of vitamin D. They are unable to inhibit the abnormal retinal angiogenesis. We've already seen in one study where Cabatis et al. This demonstrated low vitamin D levels in, within the first 72 hours of life associated with development of ROP. But as we already know that these babies are deficient in vitamin D, hence we went ahead and we tested the vitamin D levels in the fourth week of life, when actually we presume that the phase of angiogenesis uh, sets in. So to conclude, vitamin D definitely has a role in angiogenesis and in deficient situations, uh, if angiogenesis is not inhibited, it leads to the proliferative stage of ROP. So uh, in conclusion, I would like to say that uh, vitamin D could be perhaps a good marker towards uh, uh, understanding the uh, progression in ROP and it perhaps could also help uh, if, it, if it's stabilized at an earlier age, it could uh, prevent the further progression. Thank you. Vitamin D could be, if you had taken mothers, probably that would be more relevant because at one month of age, probably children would be neonatally getting whatever they had in the mother. And a lot of population has low vitamin D levels. It's a very common uh, problem with us. It's a public health problem, I think. Sir, actually the uh, maternal transfer happens during the last trimester. So these preterm babies are also actually cut off that entire uh, supply from the maternal source. So inherently they are anyways having less of vitamin D. No, no, what sir is was... saying is mother is... Mother is a culprit. What I'm saying, mother is a culprit. So you should have targeted the mother rather the baby. <laughs> That's my point. Yes, Mother's blood was not taken. Yeah, because we didn't know that babies are going to develop a of your preterm. Mother sample, I think that would uh, show more. So did the pediatricians, the uh, neonatologists advise any vitamin D? Yes, no, sir. So they were getting supplemental uh, cholecalciferol. Uh, generally, they were giving the multivitamins, which has 100 cholecalciferol of vitamin D. So once they saw the vitamin D levels were uh, uh, like insufficient, they were adding. So when we saw that uh, it is being added a little earlier, the progression was a little slower compared to the babies who were not being given. with mother vitamin D levels, I think that would be interesting. That's next time, I'll do it. So, uh, how long, uh, did you check the vitamin D levels after supplementing? Uh, no, ma'am, that, that goes to the next phase. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.